Welcome back to Arcade, I am Super Tommy, and in this video we're going to look at Parallax with Tile Sprites. And because it is December and the holidays are coming up here, we're going to do this winter theme. You see we've got our tree, these houses, maybe they're gingerbread houses, they got snow on them though. There's mountains in the back and just very festively winter. Now we've got another Parallax video we've done a year or so ago that did Parallax using just images where you would have to like manually do the repeating yourself. Now with tile sprites, that can be taken care of for you and we'll show you how in this video. Okay, so now to start, we're gonna look at what is Parallax. We'll just show you briefly what Parallax is. If you're coming to this video, you may probably already know, but it doesn't hurt to give a little overview of what it is. Then we're gonna show you what tile sprites are and how to use them and a code example in phaser three to see basically this example, this background, the mountain, the sky, the trees, the houses, um, watch or example of how we can turn that, given those assets into a parallax background for our game. Let's get started with what is parallax. Okay, so parallax is basically when you have different layers and they move at different speeds. So the most common one here is I got three backgrounds or three layers. The very back one, that's the sky, that's stationary. That is the background that will not move. So that's like a solid color or a sky in this case. You've got little stars there. They're so far away that they basically appear not to be moving. Then in after that or in front of that is our mountains. You see the mountains are in front of our sky background. And that is going to move slower than the layer in front of it, which is these houses. So that's going to move at, let's say, normal speed. So you've got something moving at, let's just say, I don't know, 10 pixels a frame as you move. The one behind it, maybe that the mountains, because they're further away, is going to move slower. Let's say it's going to move at one pixel uh, a frame. And then the very background, the sky doesn't move at all. And when you combine those together, you get this effect that looks like it's 3D, because in the real world, if you are driving and you see mountains, and you see trees closer to the highway, the trees look like they're moving kind of with you and the, or not with you, they're moving faster than the mountain. It looks like it's completely stationary. So let's look at how we can use tile sprites for this and what tile sprites are. So tile sprites, let's say we have this mountain background right here. This is width 800. So let's just say this image, it has a width of 800 pixels. And what a tile sprite does is if we, made our tile sprite let's say 100 uh, 1100 pixels the tile sprite will basically automatically repeat our texture to fill the rest of the space it uses gl repeat really all you need to know is that if you have a picture or an image and you use tile sprites you make the tile sprite a certain size it's just going to fill in by repeating whatever your texture is um, up to the bounds of your image now one thing to note that star right there is that you need to use pot or power of two textures for best results power of two means you know two to the power of whatever so two to one two to two so that's like you know two four eight sixteen thirty two so you want textures of that power of two size for best results so you can first try without power of two if you see kind of like artifacting or things are not lining up correctly then just update your image to be power of two for those to basically go away now let's see how we can actually use tile sprites. All right, so now using tile sprites, what we have is a tile position property that you can set, and it's gonna have an X and a Y component on it. In our video here, we're gonna focus on X since the assets we have really only parallax uh, horizontally. But you can do the same thing with Y. So if you wanna parallax up and down for you know, jumping or just moving up and down perhaps. Uh, but here the tile position is what's gonna move the sprite within its bounds, and it'll do that automatic repeat. So the second one below that, let's say we have an X position of 70, where the first one is zero. What you see is our mountains have moved to the left, right? And it has auto repeated itself on that end where there was no mountain. It repeats with the front. So what you see is the front of it is repeated after the end. So your assets need to be repeatable. All right, so now let's jump into the code here and see how we can implement this in Phaser 3. Okay, here we are in Phaser 3. We've got a game scene here. This is just a pretty simple generic setup. 
Take note of this backgrounds array. We're not using it yet. We will use it so that we can basically loop through all our backgrounds and know what to set its movement ratio to. Like I said before, some will move slower than others. We're gonna set that with this ratio number and we're just gonna have our tile sprite in there when we loop through in our update. So don't worry about that right now. So to start, let's just say we load all our, all our uh, assets here. So we've got our sky, mountains, a middle, a foreground, and then two more grounds uh, in front of us. We've got like a five or, or like six layer parallax here. We've got this little snowman just to have something to move around with. So to start, we're gonna just add general generic images to show you what this looks like, uh, what the visual is gonna look like. We've got a dude here, and we're using our camera to follow a player, our player. Since I'm expecting in your game, your camera will probably also follow your player, so we'll show you how to do that um, in like a more realistic game scenario. So let's take a look at what this looks like in Phaser 3. And by in Phaser 3, I mean running in Phaser 3, which is what we have here. We've got our snowman and our background. And so if I move my snowman, you see the background is just moving, you know, as you would expect if it's just a background, like an image in your scene and you've got your character moving and the camera's following your character. So that's where we're starting off from. Now we're gonna convert these into tile sprites and then move them uh, slower or faster depending on where they are in our layers. Okay, back here in VS Code. So we have our images here. Now the first one is our sky. We're gonna leave that alone because the sky is not going to move like we talked about. Since it's so far away, it's got stars and everything, they're just gonna appear stationary. One thing we will do is we're gonna add um, scale factor. So set scale factor, or sorry, scroll factor to zero. Now we're doing that because we're using our camera and we don't want the, uh, this background to move with the camera since this should be completely stationary. So we're using scroll factor, it'll stay um, in one place, like pinned in one place so that when we move, it will not move. So next, let's just convert these one at a time to tile sprites. So we've got a mountains over here. So let's do this.add.tile sprite. And what we need in tile sprite is an XY, just like an image. But what we don't normally do in image is width and height. And then we put in the texture. So the width and the height should only be as big as you need. So in our case, it should only, it only needs to be the width and height of our game, which is our game window. So you want to generally keep your tile sprites as small as uh, you need them to be, which is gonna be however, whatever is visible. You don't need to make it bigger than that since the repeating is gonna handle uh, showing the different places as you move it. So just keep it to the smallest size you need. In our case, it is the size of our window. So we already have that here with height from our scale manager. Let's move that up to the top. So we're gonna do zero, zero with height. And then our texture is gonna be mountains. And we're also gonna set the origin to zero, zero. That's the top left. This is for easier reasoning about since at the top left. And then we're gonna also set scroll factor here to zero, zero. Since we don't want it to move, the tile sprite is stationary. And then we move the stuff inside the sprite. We, we set tile position to move the sprite. So that's the mountains. So now let's actually do it for the rest of this. It's basically the same. Let's just do this quickly. Okay, so we have all of our tile sprites there. We've set them. And right now, there, nothing's really gonna happen if you were to look at what is uh, what phase is rendering in in the preview it'll just be nothing happening since we've got all our backgrounds to not move with the camera it's just going to be completely stationary what we want to do now is add each one of these to our backgrounds array now our array here is backgrounds and we're expecting a ratio and a sprite so let's come here and do this dot backgrounds dot push we're gonna put our sprite in here, but only but in that sprite section. So we wanna make an object. And so sprite is that tile sprite that we just made. And then our ratio X, let's say. For our mountain, um, we can make it something very slow, maybe this or slower about this. 
So that's for that. Now we want to do it for each one of these as well. So we want to do it for the other tosser that we just made. So let's do that real fast. Okay. So we've set each one of these backgrounds to a different ratio X. Let's just review that real fast. You can use different values if you want. So for our mountains, this is the slowest thing that moves the slowest. It's going to move at 1% of uh, whatever normal speed is. And then this is going to be 10%. This is our foreground. And then our ground one, uh, where we have middle. Oh, I missed it. Middle. That's our middle. That's 10%. Foreground is going to be 30%, and then ground one is 70%, and then uh, ground two is one. So that's uh, normal speed. Now let's go down to our update loop right here, and we're going to go through each one of these backgrounds and basically adjust tile position, like we talked about earlier, uh, to the camera scroll so that it will look like it's moving uh, the, the background in a parallax fashion as our player moves. So let's do four let i zero i less than this dot backgrounds dot length plus plus i. So we're just uh, looping over our array, our array of backgrounds. So let's just say g this dot backgrounds i. So that's going to be you know mountains middle foreground, and then we're going to do bg dot sprite dot tile position since the sprite is our tile sprite dot x. Our position x yep that's right uh this dot cameras dot main that's our main camera dot scroll x times the ratio x now if you wanted to set y you do the same thing and have a ratio y and then do uh top position y equals camera stop main dot scroll y times that ratio so now let's look at what this is um in our preview Okay, here we are. So if what we did was right, if I press the left and right keys, there will be parallax. So let's see. And there is. So there we have it. You see the mounds are moving very, very slowly, but they are moving. You can you can see it. That more mounds are being revealed on the right, and the foreground is moving much faster. The tree is a little bit slower uh, than the houses, and the houses are slower than that main foreground. So I can, let me move my snowman down here. So I'm just going to do... Uh, I'm not showing you this code, but it's not a secret. It's the uh, follow offset. So in cameras.main.startfollow, you can also set follow offset. And we're going to just set this to, so set follow offset. And the Y um, is what we want to set. We'll just say 145. Let's see. Okay, so now we're on the ground. It looks a little bit nicer. Your game probably wouldn't even need that because if you're doing a side scroller with tiled for tile maps, uh, you'll just land with some physics on the ground somewhere. Okay, so let's just do this again. As you can see, I'm sliding along the path there, and, and it's moving at a faster rate than the houses, which is further behind. And if I go backwards, this also works. And this looks kind of 3D, where things are moving at different speeds depending on what layer they are in. Now, if you learned something and enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like, hit that thumbs up button, to give us a like.